Hey, what's up, YouTube? So, it is Wednesday morning. It's about uh, 9 o'clock. It's 11 degrees outside, and we're heading down to Ohio to fix a liquid header on a rooftop package unit. But for now, guys, stick around. I'll see you on the job site. Cue the music. Here's our liquid header we're going to be replacing. Now, I originally thought that there was a panel I could remove right here and kind of get access, but what I'm going to end up, end up doing is removing this condensing fan and then just climbing down inside there. Do you guys hear that? It sounds like a Kawasaki, doesn't it? Well, when I was here originally to diagnose this unit, I found there's a there's an air gap underneath this curb and it's causing that noise because it wasn't sealed properly. All right, all right, all right, stop here. So I had some audio issues. So the next few seconds of this footage will be kind of weird because I'm going to have to do a little bit of voiceover. So just a fair warning for you. Here I am inside the condensing unit. I'm talking about stuff with my face. There's me pointing at the liquid header that we're about to replace. There's me again pointing at the liquid header we're about to replace. And here is me with my favorite little tiny tubing cutter. I'm probably describing how to use a tubing cutter, how you spin it around, all that fun stuff. Four more to go. All right. And there's part of our liquid header. Now we just have to go through and unbraze all six of these little stubbies. So as I was unbrazing that stubby right there, it started pouring oil out of it. So I had to stop brazing, of course. I'm guessing that's the main orifice that was plugged up. Now I expected that bottom one to be the toughest one, but 
it was this one, the very last one on top. As you can tell, the copper stub sort of just broke off as I was trying to unbrace it and pull it out of there. I'm not real sure, but it broke right off, so now I have to try to figure out a way to get that little piece of copper out of there so I can braze in the new header. This is one of the pistons out of the old piston header assembly. You can kind of see that piston right down in there. Let me give you a better look. See right there? That inside there is our piston. Now this one is the one that broke off and all the oil leaked out, and this is the one that I assumed was plugged up just because of the oil problem. If we look down inside there, it looks plugged up. So let's get her on the light here. Yeah, there's no light shining through that whatsoever. So out of six, we had one plugged up. I'm not sure how well you guys can see down inside that stubby piece of copper, but what you're looking at is the piston. And it doesn't look like it's plugged up. It looks like it was actually never machined properly. There's not a hole there whatsoever. Now on the back side, there seems to be a little bit of a hole. Our new header is brazed in. We're being in such a tight spot, it actually wasn't too terrible. Just gotta go slow and be mindful. My biggest concern was the flame hitting some of these other tubes. Just got the system pressurized and I found a leak in my factory made liquid header right over here. Right there right from the factory. So that's special. All right, let me see if I can braze that shut now. All right guys, time for a real time check-in. So on that last clip you saw on the left-hand side of my liquid header, we had a leak from the factory, of course. And I repaired that leak and I went to pressure test it again and then I found a leak on the other side. So I'm assuming it just wasn't brazed properly from the factory. Anyway, fixed that one, pressure tested it. We held at about 175 PSI. And um, then after that, another fun thing happened. My CPS micron gauge quit working. Not sure if it's just too cold out for it or what, but uh, I had some issues with that, so I had to bust out my backup Subco micron gauge, so I got that on there right now. We're down to about 1,500 microns. Gonna let this run a little while longer. Shouldn't be an issue getting out of 500 and then we'll charge it up and I'm gonna get out of here because I've been out in the cold all day long. All right, stay tuned. Hey, what's up guys? So, we're all done with that call. I'm heading home right now. As you probably guessed, I wasn't able to actually turn the AC on in that unit because it was uh, about 15 degrees out by the time I left, so. We'll have to wait till summertime, or when it warms up, sometime in the spring maybe, and we'll get a better idea if that unit runs. It does run in heat mode, I know that, but running an AC just isn't in the cards today. So anyway guys, hope you liked the video, hope you learned a little bit of something, hope it entertained you for a wee little bit, and with that, I'll see you guys in the next one, alright?